Hey folks, welcome back to the Beer Wrench Garage. Um, I do apologize, it's been it's been a little bit since I uh, made a video, but um, it's been really busy and it's been kind of cold and I haven't been able to get out to the garage and uh, do project stuff. I've had some other stuff come up, you know, life and everything. So, uh, we're back at it tonight. It's a real nice night outside. It's uh, kind of pleasant being in the garage. And uh, we're drinking Tito's Vodka and Grapefruit. We are uh, starting the reassembly for this uh, 2.0 engine. Uh, for those of you that might not know or don't know, don't care, haven't cared. Um, we uh, we had an issue where uh, this is a project car. I bought it uh, about a year ago now, nine months ago. And had um, uh, engine was blown. Rebuilt the engine and had uh, low oil pressure issues. Long story short, I uh, pulled it out, tore it down, and uh, diagnosed it as a failed series of these guys. Uh, these are all squirters. These ones are the new ones. Um, can you, I don't know if you can see them right there. These ones are the new ones. Uh, obviously, Audi OEM oil squirters. Um, but that was the issue. I had uh, failed oil squirters that weren't uh, squirting oil. Uh, the way they should have been. So this block is uh, is is ready to get assembled. Um, what we're going to have to do is start putting the oil squirters where they go, right here, um, in these little uh, uh, receptacles, basically at the bottom of the uh, uh, cylinder. Once we have that in place, uh, as you can see, got all our bearings and bolts and everything. Got mains connecting rods, piston rings. I'm re-ringing these pistons, even though they're probably good, would be fine. Um, I figured since I have them out, I'll go ahead and re-ring them. Uh, I just don't want to put this motor together and have to take it out again because for whatever reason, the rings didn't seat because I reused them. So um, let's go ahead and get started with the doggone uh, oil squirters. Like I said, set in the block, and uh, they're torqued to 27 newton meters, and I believe it's like a M8 or M10 uh, triple square. I'm not messing with them, but because uh, I'm pretty sure that they're good to go. But we'll just put them in here, uh, and we'll torque them down. And then that'll allow us to lay in the bearings for uh, the mains and lay the crank on there. I'm gonna lay these squirters in by hand and then I'll come back, tighten and torque them with the uh, torque wrench. Again, the torque spec is 27 Newton meters, okay? Uh, I guess I should have checked to see if they're a damn uh, M8 or M10s. Nope, they're M8s. So there you go. Okay, torque at 27 newton meters. And listen to the click. There you go. Okay, that's good. So that is good. Now, we can proceed with getting our um, we can proceed with getting our uh, crank ready to install. So as you can see, this is where I got the um, oil squirters in. And so we're looking at the bottom of the engine, uh, the bottom of the cylinder. Um, they're torqued. So I really like the Amsoil assembly lube. I've been doing a bunch of projects. I'm kind of using that up lately, uh, but I got a little bit of a uh, Lucas oil as well. Um, you can get that at any auto, uh, auto store. I got that from AutoZone. Um, so before I lay in the uh, main, the, the bearings for the uh, crank, I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, 
it should. Yeah, this should be dry. So good thing I remember. They shouldn't um, shouldn't put anything in there. I don't believe because that bearing isn't gonna isn't gonna have contact or isn't gonna be turning in this groove. So good thing I just remembered not to put uh, assembly oil. It's not necessary. I'm a big fan of the Kolbenschmidt brand. I believe it's German, sounds German, but it's quality stuff and I've used it before with uh, no issues. So I'm kind of careful here to carefully open this. And as you can see, the uh, bottom end or the bottom part of these uh, main bearings have this kind of uh, groove and hole in them. And uh, that's how you can tell it's the bottom end or the bottom part. And they also have this little uh, 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 tab or whatever you want to call it. And that just aligns with uh, the block right there because there's a little tab right there and all you're going to do is click it in like so you'll hear like a satisfying little click when it goes in just like that Okay, so clearly you want to make sure these bearings are clean and there's no junk or crap on them. And uh, when you can ensure that it's clean, you go ahead and uh, smear some of that. Uh, assembly oil on there now assembly lube again the the assembly lube will just kind of mix into the oil and it won't it won't hurt anything so don't be don't feel like you're going to dilute your uh, your oil or something with too much assembly lube Good. So, yeah, let me show you the crank real quick. As I'm uh, walking you over here, I just want to show you and tell you uh, it's really, really important to make sure you get the squirters in place because once you install the crank, uh, well, you have to install the squirters before you install the crank. If you install the crank, you can't install the squirters. You're going to have to take it all out again. So just keep that in mind and not forget them. So uh, I got the crank polished and it looks nice and, and in spec. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the doggone covering. Right. So there you go. We're going to do a similar thing with the assembly loop. A good, good spattering of it. All of the uh, journals are covered here with lube. Cool. So I feel really good about how lubed up this is. Yeah, I know. That's what you said. And then uh, we'll walk you back. All right. Just to reiterate, our bearings are good. <sighs> Double checking this. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Looks good. So we're going to lay our bearing, our crank in there, and we should be good. All right. Here we go. So this thing is a little bit heavy and you want to make sure oh, you come in the right way and not bang around too much. 
Oh yeah, that feels good. All right, so we left off uh, having put the crank in place um, with the new mains, main bearings on the bottom. And uh, if you can see right there, what uh, I have on each of my uh, main journals, I guess, is some plastic gauge. I'm pretty dumb and I did not order new um, main bolts. So I can't move ahead with the assembly uh, without new main bolts because they're uh, TTY. But what I can do is I can check clearances with my old bolts uh, because obviously we're not going to put the new bolts on there, torque them down, and then waste them because we got to pull the uh, cap off to check clearances. So I'm going to use the old bolts, which have cap. I checked the clearances with plastic gauge. I uh, took the little strip of plastic gauge and put them on each of the journals. So we'll put the caps on. And if you can see right here, oh, that's a bad angle. If you can see right here, I got the new uh, bearings in the caps. And we'll just put them on, check clearances. Uh, and the plastic gauge will not affect anything. It'll like wash away in the wall. So those are new bearings. And obviously, these mains go a certain way. You can look at here and see that there's a tang and the tang has to line up with the bottom part of the bearing. So I'm just gonna pop it in there, use the bolts to kind of fasten in there. So I won't belabor this here. Uh, I just kind of show you, we'll, we'll speed it up here in a second. Um, I'll put all these guys in place. Ooh, this one's... Basically, I'll finish this up, and then when I come back, we'll be able to uh, uh, torque them down and look at the uh, plastic gate. So, I'll jump out for a second. All right, so getting ready to torque this down. And again, these are our old bolts. We're just uh, measuring clearance here. So, got that in there. All right, so that should get us our appropriate crush on our plastic gauge. And then um, we'll go ahead and crack these open again. Got the bolts loose and uh, I'm just gonna save a little bit of effort and get them out. All right, that is that. Gotta work these main caps loose and they like to get really, really tight. So kind of use the bolts and use your fingers All right, so this is how the plastic gauge looks. We'll uh, we'll set this down here and then compare them in a minute. Oh, and this is our. Uh, Last cap. This one doesn't look phenomenal, but we'll see what it measures up to. So, I've showed this in previous videos, but on the plastic gauge wrapper, there is this scale, and it gives you bearing clearance. Um, this one right here is in inches. So what we'll do is we'll line this up with our plastic gauge and it'll tell us approximately where we are, okay? So for example, this guy right here is the number one cap and it lines up almost perfectly with that two thousandth of an inch, 0 0.002 spec which is, uh, I believe the Audi spec is uh, 0.0015 to 0.002. 
So uh, it's just slightly bigger than that. So somewhere under 0 0.002, which is fine, perfectly acceptable. I'm not gonna show you every single one, but um, they all fall into that range. So for, for what it's worth, I did check clearances with plastic gauge and this crank and these bearings um, are within spec. So I'm gonna go ahead, because those are fresh bearings, I'm gonna pop those caps back on, and then uh, when I get the bolts, I will torque them down, and then we'll, we'll continue on. All right, thank you guys.